Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're going to talk about percent applications. As you may already know, the word percent literally means per 100, and we oftentimes will rewrite ratios all per 100 to keep them consistent. While comparing rates and ratios can be a little bit difficult, once you make them all per the same thing, like per one, like a unit rate or a unit ratio, or per 100, it becomes easier to compare and contrast. While there are a lot of application of percents, in this video, we're specifically going to be talking about consumer math. And by that, we're going to be talking about money. Whether you're shopping, buying things in general, or going out to eat, having a good understanding of percent applications and math in general will help you make better decisions so that you make good choices when you're buying things, what kind of discounts you're getting, and what kind of taxes you might be paying on different types of items. This video is going to be broken down into two general topics. The first one is going to be about discounts, coupons, and sales where you're saving money. While some percentages represent money that you're saving from discounts, coupons, and sales, other percentages are additional costs that you have to pay, like tax and tip. While you have to pay tax on many items that you buy, you also pay tax when you go out to eat, and you typically pay a tip in the United States as well for the waiter or waitress. Just keep in mind that in this video, some percentages are meant to be subtracted where you save money, and other percentages are meant to be added where you pay additional money. Now hopefully this percent proportion looks familiar, where we have x over 100 is equal to a over b. Remember, x just represents the percent that we're talking about, b represents the original cost of an item or maybe the cost of a meal, and a is going to represent the amount of money maybe that's added or subtracted or the final cost, depending on how you look at the problem. I'll go into some details in a little bit. Now, A is going to be greater than B if we're talking about maybe tax or tip or something that has uh, additional costs on top of the original. And then A is going to be less than B uh, when you have a discount or a coupon or a sale, right? So if you are saving money, then it's going to be less than the original cost. And if you're paying more on top of it, then your A value or the part is actually going to be more than the whole. I'll get into some more details in a little bit, though. If you haven't already clicked the like button, now's a good time to do so. If you didn't already know, the higher percentage of people that like this video and watch it all the way through will help this channel continue to grow and help other people gain access to these types of concepts. Let's say we have a video game that originally costs $36. There's some sort of discount or coupon or sale going on and you're going to get 20% off this price. The new price of this video game is unknown and we're going to try to figure that out. B is going to represent the $36, X is going to represent the discount of 20%, and A is going to be our unknown. That being said, we can set up our percent proportion as x over 100 is equal to a over b and substitute in our values and say that 20 over 100 is equal to a over 36. Simplifying the ratio on the left, we can divide top and bottom both by 10 and then by 2 on top and bottom to get a simplified proportion of 1 over 5 is equal to a over 36. To get from 5 to 36, we can divide 36 by 5 and find out that we get a value of 7.2. 5 times 7.2 is equal to 36, so 1 times 7.2 is going to equal the value of a. We see here that a equals 7.2, so in this case we can see that we're going to save $7.20 off the video game. Subtracting that from the original amount, the final cost we'll pay is going to be $28.80, ignoring tax of course. This will be our new price. Now while this is how most people calculate their discounts, let me show you another way. Now, while you see that you have a discount of 20% off, keep in mind that while you're going to be saving 20%, you still have to pay for 80% of the item. That being said, the big brain play here or shortcut is to get rid of the 20% off and go straight for the 80%. Let's say X is 80 instead of 20 and write 80 over 100 is equal to A over 36. Simplifying the ratio on the left, we see that we can rewrite the proportion as 4 to 5 is equal to A to 36. As we found out earlier, 5 times 7.2 is equal to 36, so 4 times 7.2 is going to equal our value of A. Without having to subtract here, we find out that A is equal to 28.8, so we have our discounted price right away. The advantage here is that we didn't have to find out the discount of $7.20 and then subtract it. Instead, we just found out what 80% was right away, and we didn't have to do that extra step. Now, while percent proportions are nice and they're easy to organize information, they're not always the quickest way to go about solving percent proportions, especially when you're finding the part. Let me show you a more efficient way of finding this value. We can represent this situation as 20% of $36. As a decimal, 20% is the same thing as 0.2 or 2 tenths. In math, remember that of actually means multiplication, so we're going to multiply. And $36, we can just simplify as 36 for now. Using parentheses to represent multiplication, multiplying 0.2 times 36, we can see that we're actually going to get a value of 7.2. Just 
Just like earlier, our discount was $7.20, so we can take the $36, take away the $7.20, and we get our discounted price of $28.80. Now, I can totally find 20% of the item and then subtract it from the original cost. Let's try and do this whole thing in one step. While we're not paying for 20% of the item, we're still paying for 80% of it. So finding 80% of 36, we can say that 80% is 0.8, of means multiplication, and we're going to multiply this by 36. In doing so, we're going to see that this gets us our value of 28.8 right away without having to do any subtraction. You can see here that our answers are both the same, so the final price is going to be $28.80. At the end of the day here, when you have a 20% discount, you just have to multiply 80% by the original price to find out what you're going to pay. In this case, it's going to be 0.8 times 36. Let's take a look at another example. Imagine you have some candy that costs $5.99. You have a coupon that's 30% off this item, and we're going to look for the new price. The original price is going to be B, and the percent discount is going to be X. We're going to find A, or the new price. Going straight to the more efficient or big brain percent proportion, I'm going to write 70 to 100 is equal to A to 5.99. If you chose to write 30 over 100 is equal to A to 5.99, then A would actually represent the discount, and you'd still have to subtract that from 5.99. Now let's practice solving this without using the percent proportion again. First of all, we have 30% of $5.99. 30% is the same thing as 0.3. Of means we're multiplying by 5.99. Finding the product of these two numbers, we get 1.797. Now since the smallest denomination of money is going to be pennies, we need to round to the hundredths place, so the seven over here is gonna tell the nine to bump up, and since nine becomes a 10, that means the seven next to it, to the left, is also gonna bump up to an eight. This is basically $1.80. Now, since this was 30% of the $5.99, this is actually the discount, so we have to subtract it from the original cost to get a final price of $4.19. Remember, we're ignoring tax for now. Now, here's the big brain play again. If you're not paying for 30% of the candy, keep in mind that you're still gonna to have to pay for 70% of the candy. So, in this case, we're gonna find 70% of $5.99. 70% is 0.7, and we're going to multiply that by 5.99. In doing so, we get 4.193, and rounding this to the penny, the 3 tells the 9 to stay the same, so this is about $4.19. Notice how if you go straight for this big brain play, you don't have to do any subtracting after, and you get your answer in just one computation. Long story short, when you're talking about discounts, coupons, or sales, you have the 100% of the original cost, and you subtract some discount of the original. Seeing how the original shows up in both of these terms of the expression, we can use the distributive property and say this is 100% minus X% percent multiplied by the original cost. That's why when you had a 30% off coupon, 100% minus 30% is really just saying we can multiply 70% of the original amount to get the final cost. Now that we've talked about saving some money, let's talk about money that you have to pay on top of the original cost of something. Specifically in this video, we're gonna be talking about tax and tip. Now consider this situation where you go out to eat at this restaurant called Taqueria, and the total food comes to $42.39. Now as for tax in New Jersey, it's about 7%, it's actually 6.625%, but we're just gonna round up for the sake of this video. And to keep things pretty straightforward, we're gonna assume that we're gonna tip the waiters or waitresses 20%. And our goal here is to find out the total cost of the food, including tax and tip, the total amount that we're going to be paying. B is going to represent the original cost of just the food, and then the tax and tip is going to represent X, because those are percentages of things that we're going to be adding on to the cost. And A is going to represent the final cost that we're going to pay for everything. First, keep in mind that we're going to have to pay 100% of the original food, or 100% of $42.39. Then we're going to have to pay for 7% of the $42.39. And then finally, we're also going to have to pay 20% of the $42.39. 100% as a decimal is just going to be 1, so we'll have 1 times 42.39. 7% as a decimal is 0 0.07, so we'll have 0 0.07 times 42.39. And finally, 20% as a decimal is 0 0.2, so we'll have 0 0.2 times 42.39. This first product is going to be 42.39. The second product is going to round to the nearest penny to be 2.97. And this third decimal is going to round to about 8.48. Now the first number down here is just telling us the cost of the food. The second number is telling us the cost of tax. And the third number is telling us the cost of the tip. 
Now by adding these three costs together, we get a final price of all of the food and tax and tip together as $53.84. Now here's the big brain play that many people don't actually use, but is a lot quicker. Keep in mind that you have to pay for 100% of the food costs, then you have to pay for 7% for tax, and then 20% for tip. Adding these three together, that's a total of 127%. Finding 127% of the original cost of $42.39, we can find out the total cost in just one computation here. Finding 127% of the original food of $42.39, we can find the total cost in just one multiplication. 127% as a decimal is 1.27, and we're going to multiply that by 42.39. Multiplying these together, we get a value of 53.8353. Rounding this to the nearest penny, this 5 is going to tell the 3 to round up to a 4, and this is going to be about $53.84. Now instead of doing three separate multiplication problems and then adding everything up, we could just add up the percentages in the beginning and multiply once to get the same total cost that we got before. Now if you wanted to see this as a percent proportion, we could write this as 127 over 100 is equal to 53.84 over 42.39. Hopefully it makes sense that the final cost we're paying is more than the original, so the 127 is bigger than 100, while the 53.84 is bigger than the 42.39. Now keep in mind that while using the percent proportions is definitely good to understand, it's not the most efficient way about solving this problem. I would recommend using the big brain play of adding the percentages together, converting it to a decimal, and then just multiplying by the original cost, and that'll get you the total cost each time. Now here's one final example, we're going to combine some concepts a bit. Now in some of the earlier examples, when we had discounts, we were ignoring tax. In this example, I'm going to show you what you would do if you had a discount on an item, but you still had to pay sales tax on it afterwards. Now keep in mind that whenever you're shopping and you receive a discount, that the amount of tax you pay shouldn't be on the original price of the item, but should always be on the discounted price. That's a very important idea to know so that you don't end up paying more than what you should be. Now imagine you have a new phone that costs $849. The discount you're receiving is 15% off, but you still have to pay tax of 7%. Now while you could find 15% of the price of the phone and then subtract it, the big brain play here is just to say that if you're not paying for 15% of the phone, you're still going to end up paying for 85% of the price of the phone. Let's use 85% instead of 15% to save us some work later on. Finding 85% of $849, we can just multiply 0.85 or the decimal version by 849, and this is going to get us about $721.65. This is going to be the cost after receiving the 15% discount. Now to calculate the final price of this phone with the discount, but also having to pay tax on top, we're going to have to pay for 100% of the cheaper price plus 7% of the cheaper price. 100% plus 7% is 107%. And so finding 107% of the $721.65, we're going to get 1.07 times 721.65, and that's going to get us a value of about 772.1655. Now, rounding to the nearest penny, the thousands place, or the five in the thousands place, is going to tell the six to bump up, and we're going to have about $772.17. This will be the final cost of the cell phone after we have the 15% off discount off the original price, and then we had to pay 7% sales tax on top of the discounted price. If you wanted to think about this using percent proportions, there's really two that you want to consider. The first one is going to be 85 over 100 because we're paying for 85% of the cell phone and that's going to be equal to 721.65 over 849.00. While you've got a discount of 15%, when you pay for 85% of it, you're going to pay $721.65. Now the second percent proportion you're going to want to consider is 107 over 100 is equal to 772.17 over 721.65. The part of the proportion on top becomes the whole on the proportion on bottom, and we can see that because 107 is bigger than 100, the 772.17 is bigger than the 721.65. When you go shopping and you receive discounts or coupons, keep in mind that you're going to have to pay tax on top, and that's going to be on the discounted amount of money. Now hopefully you found this video helpful in understanding how to apply your understanding of percentages to actual consumer math where you're out in the world shopping and buying things and going out to eat. I encourage you to try to start taking a look at some receipts when you go out to eat or you go out shopping and take a look at the coupons or discounts that you might be receiving and you might see some percentages and other numbers that you might recognize and you can see if they actually make sense to you. 
Uh, as you get older, it's gonna be more and more important that you understand how to budget and manage your money a little bit so that you make good decisions to plan for the future and enjoy the things that you have. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below and even consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. As always, keep up the great work and I will see you in the next one.